Consuelo mathletes. Okay, what are we doing today? Solving quadratic equations. What we've been doing up until now is graphing. So again, I want you to compare these three things. This, this, and this. Well, what would you do with the first one? You'd simplify it because it's not an equation. What do you do with the next one? You solve it. Okay? What would you do with the last one? You would graph it. Now, most likely. Yes, I could ask you to do different things, but... Uh, that's it, okay? Now, I'm just gonna tell you straight out how to do it, how to solve it, but you have to be very careful that you do exactly what I say, not, not in a different order. It has to be exactly what I say. So the first thing you're gonna do is this. Well, I'll tell you what, I wanna show you something, and then I'll tell you what to do. Okay, I'm gonna, don't write these down, just listen. Okay, and let's take A plus B equals zero. Uh, AB equals zero, A plus B equals five, and AB equals five. Now, you really don't need to know this absolutely, but if you understand it, it will help you understand these problems. Okay, in one of these four, only one of these, can you tell me definitely what A or B has to be? There's only one, okay? Think about it. You can turn off the video to think about it, but I'm gonna just tell you right now what it is. It's this one right here, okay? Because the only way that can be true is if A is zero or B is zero. One of them has to be zero, or both of them can be zero, okay? On the first one, all they have to do is be opposites. It can be five and negative five, six and negative six, et cetera, et cetera. On the second one, tons of things can add up to give you five, you know, seven and negative two, six and negative one, two plus three. And on the last one, tons of things can be multiplied to give you five. It can be uh, five times one. It can be... Uh, five halves times two, five thirds times three, et cetera, et cetera. But the only way you can get a definite value, what you can definitely tell me what A and B are, is if one, and I mean this is first, you have to have zero by itself on one side of the equation. And second, these have to be factored. And it's got to be in that order. Okay, so the first thing you got to do is, you don't need to write that part down, but first thing you've got to do is get one side of the equation. I have to get rid of this to give myself some space here. be zero. And you know what? That's the part that everyone kind of ignores because it's the easy part. Okay. Second is the other side must be factored. But don't factor it until you get one side to be zero. It has to be in this order. And I'm telling you, if you're not good on factoring, that's what I'm saying. You got to get that straightened out because this is all factoring. Okay. Then you set each factor equal to zero. And then you solve. You just finish the problem. Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about factoring here. If you don't know how to factor, this is not the place to try and figure it out. Okay, is one side zero? Yes, so let's factor this. This will be x plus eight times x minus one. Yeah, I'm gonna rip through these So because I've already spent a lot of time you know, talking to you about factoring, so I don't wanna waste people's time that already know how to do this. Then you set each factor equal to zero and you get negative eight and one. Okay, let's take a look at this. Don't factor this now. Why? Because one side's not zero. So you have to have x squared plus 7x minus 18 equals zero. Okay, don't factor it. It does not help you to factor it until you get that side to be zero. Then this is going to be what? x plus 9 and x minus 2. Now, I want to point out something. You may skip this line. And you know what? I kind of prefer that you do. 
okay? You should, in your head, be able to say, oh, if x plus 9 is 0, then x equals negative 9. And if x minus 2 is 0, then x is 2, and you're done, okay? It all depends on how good you are at factoring. If you're good at factoring, these problems take you two seconds. Okay, let's take a look at this. One side, 0. Let's factor this. This is x times x minus 5. So x equals 0, and x equals 5, okay? You just set each factor equal to 0. There are two factors here. The first factor is x, and the second factor is x minus 5. Okay, make sure one side 0. Factor it. And again, this is, the, the, you know, this is one of the ones that I've told you about where people really mess up. So this is going to be negative 6 and plus 1. Okay? And you should be doing these on your own. Don't just sit here and, you know, and watch what I do, okay? So then x equals 6 and negative 1. Okay. One side 0, one side's factored. x equals negative 7 and negative 4. I, I did all the work for you. Okay, is one side 0? No. One side is not 0. So don't even worry about whether it's factored or not until one side is zero. So we have to get one side to be zero first. That's got to be first, okay? Why could I just solve number five real quick? Because one side was zero and it was factored. Not that it was factored and one side was zero. One side is zero first, then the other side is factored. So that's minus 18. Now, okay, so now you have to factor this because it's not factored, right? because there's a minus sign right there. There are two terms here. Okay, so is the greatest common factor? No. Difference of two squares are trinomial? No. Can I factor this as it is? No. So what I'm going to do is multiply things out and combine them. So it's x squared plus 11x plus 28 minus 18 equals 0. So it's x squared plus 11x plus 10 equals 0. And then you should be able to tell very quickly that this is x plus 10 and x plus 1. Why did I have to multiply it all out? Notice what I did is I made it 0 first. And then I asked, is there a greatest common factor? No. Difference of two squares? No. So... I combine these things. Now, is combining things factoring? No, combining is the opposite of factoring. So why did I combine them? In order to factor. I temporarily like combined them to get it in a simplified form so that I could factor it. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. This one um, is going to be just trial, tedious trial and error. It's already set equal to zero. Uh, let's, I think I'm going to go for 5x. And x, uh, let's see, I'll go for positive 3 and negative 1. No, that doesn't work. Um, and then plus 3 and negative 1. That doesn't work. Okay, so I've tried everything with 5x and x. I'm done with 5x and x. So now let's try 10x. Sorry, it wouldn't be 5x and x. I apologize. I'm ripping through these too quickly. Okay, it should have been 5x and 2x. Okay, so let's try then um, negative 3 and 1. So that would give me negative 6 and 5. That doesn't give me 13. Let's try, and switching the signs isn't going to help. Let's try plus 1 and minus 3. So that's going to be negative 15 and plus 2. Oh. Okay, all I got to do is switch, then that would give me a negative 13x, so all I got to do is switch the signs. Okay, so that should give me the, uh, and then if that didn't work, you know, then I, there's only, the only thing to give you is 3 is 3 and 1, so then I would have tried 10x and x. Okay, now, the answer is not negative 1 and negative 3, okay? You have to take each one and set it equal to 0. I'm going to do it the way I'd show, I expect you to be able to do it. So the answers would be x equals negative one-fifth and negative three-halves, okay? Now, what if you can't do that? 
Well, that's okay. You do what I told you to do. You take each one. You set it equal to zero. Wait, I did something wrong there. I apologize. This should have been a, uh, a minus three, right? Sorry about that. So let me back up a little bit. Okay, so the answer then would have been x equals negative one-fifth and x equals, or negative one-fifth, and then just positive three halves. Sorry about that. Okay, what if you can't just do it by looking at it? Well, you should be able to do it, so try practice doing it that way. You just take each one, set it equal to zero, and then x equals negative one-fifth, and x equals three halves. Okay? All right, let's take a look at this one. Okay, first of all, is set equal to zero, good. Is there a greatest common factor? Yes, there's a two, so pull it out, and it will make your life much easier. Okay. Now, this is x plus four and x minus one. So I'm going to show you what the answer is, and then if you're going, well, what about, I'll come back to it. Okay, so what are the answers? X equals negative 4 and 1. And someone could say, what about the 2? Well, okay, if you don't really understand that, let's take a look at what you do. What have I said to do? Well, look at the previous problem. Take each factor and set it equal to 0. How many factors are here? 2. Sorry, there are 3 factors. There's 2. Set that equal to zero. X plus four, set that equal to zero. And X minus one, set that equal to zero. When does two equal to zero? It doesn't, so you throw it out. Then X equals negative four, and X equals one. But quite frankly, you should just be able to look at this, this line right here, and say um, X is negative four or one. Now, let me show you something else, though. I'm going to go back and redo this whole problem because I'm going to show you something that will save you a lot of grief. Okay, it's an equation. And what have I told you about equations? First thing you should do is get rid of fractions or if there are numbers, large numbers, and you can divide away a number, then divide away those numbers. So I can divide away a 2 and say it's x squared plus 3x minus 4. Therefore, it's x plus 4, x minus 1. And you can say, well, what happened to the 2? It's an equation. It doesn't need to be there. It doesn't change. Now, let me caution you. If it's an equation y equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 8, you, you know, like when you're graphing, you can't divide away the 2 because there's a y there. It has to be 0, right? So again, the key is that it's got to be 0. Okay, and then you just say x equals negative 4 and 1. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. Now, the first thing people want to do on this one is divide both sides by x. Er, wrong. What do you do? You do the same thing in every single problem. Zero one side, factor it. If you need to set each factor equal to zero, that's fine, and then solve it. Okay. Let's do that. Let's get zero on one side. See, what happens here? I'll just show you real quickly. Divide by x, which is wrong, so don't write this down, and you get x equals 1. Okay? That's wrong. Okay? Set it equal to zero. Factor. What's the greatest common factor? x times x minus 1. And then see each factor equal to zero and x equals 0 and 1. See, if you divide by x, you miss the 0. Now, someone's going to ask me, and it's a good question, but didn't you say in problem number 8 you can divide away something that's extra? No, I didn't say that. I said you can divide away a number. Okay? You may not. This is very important. 
okay? You may not divide away a variable. Let me show you why. When, if you divide both, if you take this, x squared equals x, and you divide both sides by x, you didn't know it, but you were dividing by 0 because one of the values of x is 0. You cannot divide away a variable like in number 9. But number 8, you can and should divide away numbers, providing it's an equation. Okay? So, yeah, I'm going to say something here, and I'm going to write it down. You may not... Divide away a variable. Okay. Next one. I'm going to show you what people do, and it's wrong. They take the square to both sides, so don't write this down because it's wrong. And they go x equals 2, which is wrong. Okay. Now, what should you be doing? What you should be doing is the same thing I did in every single problem. It never varies. Get one side to be zero. Factor it. And then write each answer. Which, of course, is not what you get when you take the square root. Now, someone can say to me, Mr. Lieblang, I know how to do this by taking the square root. Okay, I didn't say it's wrong to take a square root. I said if you do it by taking a square root, you'll probably get the wrong answer. So I'll show you how you can do it by taking a square root. And so you probably aren't going to understand this. That's why I suggest you not do it. Okay, take the square to both sides. And what do you get when you get the square to 4? You don't get plus and minus 2. If you don't know why, go back, chapter 1, radicals. A square root never gives you more than one answer. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 only, period. Never more, never less. Okay, what's the square root of x squared? It's not x. It's the absolute value of x. Why is that? If you want to come in, I'll talk to you about it, but uh, that's why I said you're probably not going to understand it. You don't need to understand it, because if you do it the way I'm telling you to do it, you don't have to worry about it. And then when you solve the absolute value, you get x equals 2 and negative 2. The, the plus and minus comes not from the square root. A square root will never give you more than one answer. It, come, it comes from the absolute value. It comes from this step that almost everyone leaves out. Okay? And I will explain it someday, but not today. All right. So I suggest you not do it this way. It's correct, but you know what? You probably won't do it correctly. All right. Now, I want to give you a definition. A definition is a, of, of what a zero is. A zero is the value of x when y is zero. Okay? Now, I know that sounds um, an awful lot like the definition of an x-intercept, but it's not. Okay? Definition of an x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now, how do you find the x-intercept? You plug in... Zero for y. Gosh, that sounds an awful lot like this definition, but it's not. Okay? And I'm going to go through a couple problems fairly quickly um, and show you why. So the first thing I'm going to do in each of these, because it's the easiest one, is find the y-intercept. Okay. To find the y-intercept, you plug in zero for x, so you get zero, negative 14, and 0, 49. Just plug in x, and that's what you should get. If you have a question on it, come and see me. Okay, the x-intercept. Okay, how do you find the x-intercept? You put in 0 for y, and notice you have to put in the 0 for y. If you just factor it the way it's written, it, you know, if you factor f of x equals, well, let, let me finish this, and then I'll come back to it. Okay, then what do we do? Zero's on one side. We'll factor the other side. So that's x, what, uh, plus 7, and x minus 2. So it's negative 7, comma, 0, and 2, comma, 0. Fine. 
All right, the zeros. You plug in zero for y. And then you factor. And now, a zero is not a point. A zero is just the value for x. So the answer is negative 7 and 2. Not negative 7 comma 0. That's the x-intercept. And 2 comma 0 is the x-intercept. But it's just, it's just the values of x. Remember, the x-intercepts are points. Okay? Now, let's take a look at this one. So it's a, it's a fine thing. And for the most part right now, you may think of them kind of as the same thing. The x-intercept. We'd say 0 equals x squared plus 49. And you know what? You can't factor. Well, you don't know how to factor that right now. And you know what? There are no x-intercepts for this. Okay? You don't know how to factor that? And uh, I'm just telling you, even if you did, you'd find out there are no x-intercepts. But you know what? There are zeros for this. And I'm not going to show you how to get them because you don't have to worry about it right now. Someday you will, but you do not have to worry about this at all, okay? This actually factors into something called x plus 7i and x minus 7i. And so your zeros are negative 7i and 7i. And you do not have to worry about that at all. The main thing you need to get out of this is... A zero and an x-intercept aren't perfectly the same thing. For now, you may think of them as the same thing. You're not going to get, you know, this problem number two here. You're not going to get that yet. I'm just warning you. Eventually, okay, they're not going to be the same thing. Because there's no place where that graph crosses the x number two, right? Because what is this thing? This thing is a parabola shifted up 49. It obviously doesn't cross the x-intercepts the x-axis, so there are no x-intercepts. But there are values for x that will make that statement true. You're just not familiar with them yet. We'll get to them eventually. All right, I've said enough. Have a good day. Bye-bye.